Fellow citizens, good evening. Today is the 29th of August, 2021. Few hours before the 30th of August, 2021, the National Day of Awakening. This is a message from the People's Coalition for Civil Action, the voice of the people of South Sudan. My name is Abraham Awolej. Fellow citizens, tonight we want to give you our final message before the National Day of Awakening tomorrow. On the 20th on the 13th of August 2021, the People's Coalition for Civil Action issued a statement announcing the National Awakening Day. A day when the people of South Sudan are invited to come out to protest the poor performance of the government using peaceful demonstrations, strikes, sit-in, boycotting, all forms of social resistance, peaceful social resistance. And in that document, the People's Coalition for Civil Action demanded six items for the government to fulfill in order to prevent the peaceful demonstrations from happening. First among this was the release of Governor Quill Aguriquil. We had demanded that Governor Quill is innocent, he has not committed any crime, he simply signed a declaration and he was arrested on the 2nd of August, 2021. Today it is the 29th of August. So he has been in jail for 27 days. We condemn his continuing detention and we demand his media release. Unfortunately, the government has refused to respond to this demand. That is one. Number two, we had asked the government to actually um, end all forms of violence and wars in the country. We know that ending wars and conflict uh, is a long-term process. But at least the government would have come out with a plan and strategy on how to bring conflict to an end. The government has failed to respond to that. Third, we had asked the government to increase salaries of public employees by 4,000%. Because the current salary given to our employees, government employees, soldiers, and low-ranking civil servants is very low. Is an, and those people are now living below poverty line. The government has not responded. We have also added in the fourth demand that the government should actually improve the overall economic conditions in the country and to lower the prices of basic commodities in the market. The government has not responded to this. Fifth, our people in ruin in Tarjat, in Bentiu, in Paloch, in Reng, and in Malakal, and the surrounding areas, areas that are affected by uh, oil production, are experiencing high rates of uh, abnormal diseases related to heavy metals as a result of oil pollution in those areas. There are a number of abnormal births and infertility rate has increased, cancer rates and other types of diseases have increased in the area. And so we had demanded that the government should improve the working conditions of uh, employees in the oil fields and work, uh, living conditions of those who live near the oil fields and of course the cleanup of the polluted water and other waste in the, in the, in the oil producing areas. And for the government to actually demand the oil workers and the oil companies 
to come up with better management of waste. The government has not responded to this. And the sixth and final demand was that if the government does not fulfill these conditions, that President Kir and Dr. Riyag Mashar should step aside. The government has ignored in totality these requests and brushing aside the demand of people of South Sudan, claiming that these are demands of three or four people. And so tomorrow is the 30th of August. The government has not fulfilled all these demands. So the people of South Sudan are invited to do two things, to come massively to the streets and protest, demonstrate, sit in, or to stay home, especially those who are employed, those who are working for the government should all stay home tomorrow and to stay home indefinitely until their demands are met. So to tomorrow is a national day, a national awakening day, where our people are going to wake up to the truth of a government that does not listen to them. It's a government that serves the interests of those who are running it, but doesn't serve the broader interests of the people of South Sudan. And so tomorrow is simply a national day of awakening. We want to wake you up to the truth about this government, that it is a government that has failed, is a self-interest government being run by incompetent people, people who lack any strategy, any program, any service, or any vision for that matter, for the country. So we should put them on notice tomorrow by coming out or by staying home, that their incompetence, their failure in providing leadership and vision has become unbearable and that they should prepare to go. They should leave. That's what tomorrow is about. Now, from our perspective, we have actually won already before tomorrow happens. We have awakened our people. And that is precisely why we call it the National Day of Awakening. Our people are awake. They now know that the government is serving the interests of a few. The government is dividing people along ethnic and regional lines. That the government is looting the country. That the leadership has failed. They have no vision. They have no strategy. They have no program for the country. They are simply serving themselves. And so the government has become an end in itself. But in the rest of the world, the government is not an end. The government is a means through which the people who live in that country are able to achieve their aspirations. So the end goal of any government is a better life for every single citizen. That is the end of government. The, the end goal of any government is a secure population, is a developing country, is a united country, is a country that has services for its people, that has plans for its generation, young generation, born and unborn. This is what a government is. The government is simply a means for organizing the society so that the society can achieve uh, 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 good for, for the majority of the people. But if the government becomes an end itself, serving itself, then the, that government fail to meet the qualification of being called a government. And therefore, the government of South Sudan has failed to qualify as a government. It is not a government of people. It is a self-serving government. And we therefore have come to reject it. So tomorrow, because that government is a government of serving itself, it will try to respond with heavy handedness, suppressing people from coming out. And if they succeed in suppressing our people from coming out tomorrow, 
We have already declared victory. Our people are now fully aware. Uh, the oil workers have risen up to demand their rights. And we want to appreciate the Minister of Petroleum who actually came to fight for the oil workers. But now it is succumbing to pressures from the government to let the oil workers go back to work before their demands are met. We are sympathetic to the oil workers. They should press forward with their strikes until the human resource uh, manual is unified and that they are paid just like those who are doing the same job in the same industry who are not South Sudanese. We stand with them in solidarity and we appreciate them for responding to the people's coalition's call for the increment of pay. So that is one. We have won in that round. The people, the medical doctors uh, the Juba Teaching Hospital the Emergency Department came out to demand their rights to be paid and to have better working conditions and to have protective gears as they deal with emergencies on a daily basis. We stand in solidarity with them and we demand that their uh, demands are met. And we appreciate them for standing up for their rights. The people of Ye have expressed their desire to challenge the state. And the state heavy-handedly uh, pounds on uh, local leaders, religious and civil society leaders, and arrested them. And they now remain in jail, simply because they are willing to speak out for their people. They have not committed any crime. They should be released with immediate effect and we stand with them in solidarity. Our people in WAP yesterday came out to express their disappointment with the state. Some of their civil society leaders were called to be intimidated in a meeting of the Council of Ministers. And yesterday the state security agents arrested some leaders of civil society and they stormed a school, a high school. These are desperate attempts of a state that has failed to, to convince its people of why it exists. And so we stand in solidarity with our people in Wau. Wow. In Bentiu, our people rose up a week ago. People who are working without contracts for three years, being enslaved by the oil, work, by the oil companies. Because when you work without a contract, you are basically at the mercy of your employer. They can change the terms and conditions anytime, including the terms of pay. And so we stand, one of them was beaten. Uh, those who protested to demand their rights was beaten and now he's in a hospital in Juba. We stand in solidarity with them. Our people in Bor were intimidated the radio was shut down. Civil society leaders were called for questioning by the authorities. And the, and the journalists were arrested and taken to the station by the authorities. Simply because they happened to be free people who can speak their minds. They had not committed any crime. These are desperate attempts by a state and by a government that has nothing to offer to its citizens. So it resorts to intimidation. Yesterday, uh, our people uh, in Juba woke up the civil society leaders. They woke up to heavy deployment of soldiers, including deployment of national security officers in front of their offices as a way of intimidating them. And some of them are being, uh, are being pursued, targeted for arrest, and some have already been arrested. We condemn these desperate attempts and we call for the government to respect the rights of people to exist 
as citizens. Yesterday, an important event, a wrestling event between Lake State and Jonglei was cancelled and their leaders were arrested, later to be released. And we're told, okay, it was a false report that was brought to us. No, it wasn't. They were simply arrested to intimidate others. It was, this, it was an attempt at intimidating people. And the wrestling was obviously cancelled because the state is afraid that the gathering could turn into demonstrations. These are attempts of a state that has failed. It has no story to tell. It has no good story. It has no story of achievement. They desperately try to say they are implementing an agreement, an agreement which they have refused to implement. It is too late. There is nothing to be implemented. You have already killed the agreement. You have killed the spirit of the nation. And our people are entitled to stand up. We also condemn the segregative and discriminatory attempt yesterday when leaders of the wrestling team from Jonglei were arrested, targeted, yet the other leaders of Lake State were with them and they were not arrested. This is again a ploy by the state and by the government that has failed, has no program, has no vision to try to divide our people by region, trying to isolate some uh, quarters of our society as, as being problematic while others are not problematic. These all tactics, tricks have been discovered and they are not working. People of South Sudan are not buying. These lies have come to an end. Nobody will take them. And that is why people have come massively to support the People's Coalition for Civil Action. We stand in solidarity with our people wherever they are, wherever they are suppressed. And tomorrow the whole world will be watching. All, all eyes are on South Sudan tomorrow. Any small mistake by the state, shooting of civilians is a war crime. Brutalizing citizens is a crime against humanity. And all of those things will be caught on camera. And so anybody will try to attempt, we will attempt to brutalize citizens, arrest them, citizens who are not violent, who are peaceful, who are peacefully demonstrating, will be documented by journalists, by citizens, journalists, by international organizations, by the forces themselves. We have elements in the forces who will be taking pictures of their colleagues who are committing crimes. So to the soldiers, you will be convicted as an individual. Remember the incident in terrain, those soldiers who committed those crimes were prosecuted. So be careful what you do tomorrow. Listen to the co commands of your commanders. But if they are telling you to kill your own people, that is a bad idea, don't do it. And so that is what, uh, that is our appeal to our soldiers. Now, the state has deployed heavily around Juba. This is an attempt obviously to oppress, to suppress, and to intimidate our people. But our men and women in uniform, the men of service who are deployed, also have grievances, major grievances against the government. They have never been paid, and so when they were being mobilized, they actually refused. So the government had to trick them with the distribution of military uniforms, the distribution of guns, distribution of uh, issuing of their salaries for the first time, and other things. That's when some people have responded. Now, that is actually the biggest vote of no confidence. If your own soldiers cannot respond to commands because you have not been treating them well, you have not been caring for them, you have not been giving them the resources they need to do their job, 
then you really have lost no you have lost legitimacy you have lost credibility and so so our soldiers and police we know your grievances we are speaking for you and we believe in you we don't see you as a threat in those streets we see you as allies we see you as liberators and so do the right thing tomorrow don't harm your people protect your people and their properties and so to our people there should be no despair tomorrow people should not despair if the government respond with heavy handedness we will prevail we will continue to protest tomorrow on the 30th on the 31st on the 1st and until we are able to achieve our objectives and so tomorrow is just the beginning it is not the end it is the beginning of the national awakening so do not despair do not fear and do not lose hope we are in this to win it it has come to our attention the government is propagating rumors and allegations that the leaders of the people's coalition for civil action are people in diaspora or they have run away and therefore they are agents of foreign agenda and therefore nobody will lead people tomorrow to the streets those are lies those are uh, wild allegations you know us you know rajam mahandis a leader of south sudanese civil society he signed the revitalized peace agreement and he has been speaking loudly about the rights of our people on the streets of juba and across the country you know abraham awolich have been speaking have been a regular visitor on national radios on miraya on i radio and a number of other outlets speaking also critically about events unfolding in our country so we are not foreigners and we are not people in diaspora we live among you we have simply been in, uh, targeted by the state they want to arrest us or kill us so that we can go silent so that your vision dies so that your aspiration do not rise so that your voices are not heard and we are not going to give them their wish that's why we have been hiding that's why we are hiding so that we can continue to speak for you that is not cowardice we are not cowards they say we are cowards and we are afraid no we are not cowards if we were cowards why would we stand up against a a, a dangerous failed regime why would we stand up against a dictator we would not and so those allegations should be rejected and should be dismissed as false and these are desperate attempts by the government to paint an image of a revolution that has captivated the attention of our people they want to paint that image as negative and we will not accept that we have already within 3 weeks now 4 weeks we have actually succeeded in mobilizing and uniting our people the people of yay are speaking in unity with the, with the people in rang they are speaking in unity with the people in awil they are speaking in unity with the people of bentiu with the people of bor with the people of malakal with the people of warap with the people of virul uh, of lakes of rumbek of western equatoria with the people of eastern equatoria in torit with the people of uh, central equatoria in juba we have united the country in 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 28 days something that president kir and dr riek machar have not done in 16 years where is leadership there has not been leadership that's why people are desperate and so we want to appeal to our people to dismiss those allegations we are among you 
And if we think that the conditions are right for us to come out, we will come out and lead you to the, to march. But if we feel that the conditions are not yet right and that your vision is still weak, has not yet formulated very well, we will continue to lead it and continue to speak for you. The PCCA, the People's Coalition for Civil Action, has prepared so many leaders on the ground who are committed to this cause. Some of them are members of the government. Some of them are ordinary citizens. They will speak for you. They will come out and lead you. They are ready. And so let no one tell you that there, are, there is no leadership on the ground. If there is no leadership on the ground, why is the government panicking? Why is the government putting out so many soldiers? Why is the government shutting down networks? It's afraid. And so tomorrow, fellow citizens, tomorrow is a massive day for the people of South Sudan. The people of South Sudan will wake up to a new day, a defining moment in our history where the ordinary people of South Sudan have risen up to stand for their rights to reclaim the ideals of their liberation, of freedom, justice, and equality. Tomorrow is a defining moment when the people of South Sudan shall face a government that has not been challenged, a government that has thrives on divisions among our people, a government that has thrives on fueling ethnic divisions, on looting the resources of our people, on displacing responsibility, kicking responsibilities down the road. A government that has muddled through without a sense of direction, with so much, so little leadership, we can't stand it anymore. And so tomorrow the world will witness or shall witness an event that is going to define the course of our country, that we, the people of South Sudan, have united to move our country forward. And we will silence the warlords who have looted our country and spilled so much blood of our own loved ones. Tomorrow is the day when we will pronounce a new future for the country. We will fight for this vision. We will fight collectively. We will fight individually. And we are going to win. And the People's Coalition for Civil Action will be there with you, for you, together with you. We are going to win. And the, few, and the people of South Sudan shall prevail. Thank you very much.